just say it was somebody who had a very tragic ending or perhaps, you know, were not good people in their lives. I'll get those, I'll get that energy and uh, they won't pick up on that at all. So because they're not in that same energy field. So I really feel like when you're playing with any board, be it a spirit board or, a, you know, like, I don't know what I'd invite in on an angel board. If, <laughs> if yeah. anything, because let's just say that I'm not vibrating at the same level as, you know, the Archangel Michael or Raphael or, you know, I, I don't know what energy level they're vibrating at because personally, I don't believe in them. So, <laughs> but, you know, not to make a joke out of it because people do believe and, and, you know, you have your beliefs and, and that's all well and good. And we're, you know, we're not here to decide who is right or who is wrong. Um, it's just for me, I just feel like that's some um, level that I'm not going to reach. And even when I do Reiki, it's, it's really unusual because, you know, when I'm pulling energy through from, you know, universal energy for Reiki, um, when I'm passing that through to another person, it's doing a really fantastic job. But at the same time, um, I don't need to do it as long sometimes as other people might. So I'm not sure what that's saying right there either. It's like sometimes I can push enough energy through in, you know, two or three minutes that might take someone else 20 minutes to push. And I think it's just maybe experience in channeling. That's probably all of that it is. Um, and I mean, I'm always envisioning when I do my Reiki healing, I try to envision the energy as colors, right? Because then that way I have a little bit more control over what I'm using. Because when we look at a rainbow or we look at a colors, um, we also sort of consider those colors as a wavelength. I look at nature's version of color. I don't look at, you know, what the, you know, angelic board of colors is I'm just looking at you know um, vibrational colors in science as well right so when we we know we have a prism and we create we can create those colors in a rainbow or a prism through certain levels of, of vibration and color right so that light wave and, and the way that it, it bounces around so that's sort of how I do my Reiki I kind of look at it more in a weird again science approach to, <laughs> to channeling energy but, or even when I'm using a Ouija board or doing anything like that, right? I'm always thinking in terms of communicating with an actual person as opposed to a spirit, because that's just a term. They're still people, they still carry their energy. And I just like to call them people's people, right? They're, they've moved out mm -hmm. of the physical. But so, so I see things a little differently. Um, you know, I know there's other people out there who think like me and every once in a while I'll bump into one and I'm like, oh, hey, <laughs> <laughs> we're on the same sort of thought pattern. Um, so I'm not, I'm not alone in the way that I, that I approach this, but um, also. Well, that's interesting I'm, because um, yeah. when I go to a location um, and with, the pandemic and everything, uh, those locations are, are few and far between at the moment. So in the good weather, what we've been doing is going to cemeteries. Okay. As, as, as you're aware that uh, we were doing. Yes. And that's the way that I think of them is spirits. Yes. So I'll call them spirits, even though I'm at you know, a particular grave site and I've got the name right there in front of me, you know, I'll refer to them as, as spirit and think of them as spirit. So that's interesting that, that you take a different approach to that. Yeah. Well, I think it's just, again, I, I have no real, <laughs> you know, way to gauge it. It's just very personally the way that I've adapted since I was a child. And I think having a science background, it I, I look at things a little bit differently than just basing it on my, my emotions or my feelings. Um, I'm also basing it on, on sort of some physics and quantum physics and light physics and, and some of those things that, you know, that I have tucked away in, in the little, you know, 
back storage compartments of my brain from when I was, you know, doing my bachelor of science, but it's just, um, I just don't want people to go into this with a naivety of believing that it is something different than it is, right? It, it still has the capability of being able to produce negative results, you know, and I, I don't like marketing schemes where you're given a false belief that just because it says this on it and it has nice lavender, you know, face on it and it's got pretty pictures of angels and angel wings and, you know, all of these things on it, that it's going to give you some kind of different result than what you might have if it was Ouija board, right? Um, a spirit board is a spirit board and it's really down yeah. to who and how you connect, I think. And without experience, that could be many different levels of, um, good to bad. Yeah. Well, I've heard, um, just absolute horror stories. Yes. Yes. That, and and well, I'm talking about people that I actually know. That mm -hmm. in their younger years, they fooled around with one of these boards. As you say, didn't know what they were doing and ran into trouble. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's just it, right? Um, but, you know, there's, there's, whoops, sorry. <laughs> I'm dropping things <laughs> off, can be off my desk. Um, there's lots of different stories out there about people having experiences. And often it's... Um, it's what we perceive, right? Because again, it's kind of a pseudoscience at the end of the day. You know, it's like, I believe there's more science to it than the pseudo part of it now. I mean, as we're moving forward in the 21st century, we're beginning to understand that there's a lot of things that we don't really know. And especially on a vibrational or energetic or, you know, universal level. And we're much more complex than we lead ourselves to believe. And our brains are wired for things that today we don't access anymore, right? So, so let's look at something like that. So we're talking about angel boards today, spirit boards, and we're making that comparison. But let's go back to a time before Christianity, right? Yeah, it's a few thousand years ago. It's not that long ago in the in the grand scheme of humankind, right? It's just a few thousand years. Yeah. Um, so we have many religions that are much older than Christianity, and with them come their own beliefs and their own entities, be them, you know, whatever they want to call them, angels, demons, spirits, guides, gods, goddesses, um, you know, whatever. I mean, we, we have multiple pantheons of religion to, to draw from. And if we were going back to a time, let's even go way back. Like we're talking, um, let's go back to 25,000 years ago. Right. Because at that point, we're still arguing as scientists today, and, and I find this relatively interesting as an anthropologist, archaeologist, um, that we're learning so much more about who we were 25,000, 30,000 years ago. Um, you know, we're finding these discoveries in caves now that are being exposed due to glacial reduction. And we're finding, you know, places now where we're trying to apply a modern thought process on a very old culture. And or we're trying to say they lacked culture. When in reality, I feel that no matter who they are, because there were many, um, there's many, many different you know, subspecies of hominids, right? So we, we know that now. We just happen to be the one that, that came out ahead of everyone else at the end <laughs> of the day. But let's go back to early, the early times into like say 25,000 years ago 
or even going back some 40,000 years ago with, with Aboriginal peoples from Australia. 